people under my nod. We ain't gonna stand for it no more. Bring forth liberation posse. Fire to all down press. Fire, fire. No How did you get the what you see is what you get? Because that one was very uh, I know you did the the Thug Brothers with uh Big Pun and Noriega and stuff, but was it because of you were in with Loud or how did that work? Yeah, yeah, that 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 came from um Flex. You know, he just Flex is another person I grew up with. No Flex since Flex was 12 years old, you know, funk master Flex since he was 12. Flex used to be in the window at 12 years old saying, Jesse West, say that rhyme for me. <laughs> you know, we go way back, man. But uh and Flex looked out for me a lot. He was working on that mixtape, you know. He just said, "Listen, man, um, I need a track for 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 Big Pun and Noriega. Um, can you come up with some?" And I was like, "Hell yeah!" And he booked the session, and we went to the session. And that was the the one time I met Noriega when I was telling you earlier when he was like, "Yo, I used to be like, yo, Kid Capri, does this got Jesse West on it?" It was that session that I met. You know, when I met Noriega, I never, never ran into Noriega again since that session. But I used to see Pun all the time, you know, because in the Bronx, you know. But uh, I'm glad I was able to do that, you know. He was able to say that I did a song with Pun. Uh, that 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 was a dope session, you know. I did songs with Big Daddy Kane. Same thing. I met Kane the day he came to the studio. Man. You know, I never oh. met him. Like um, I had did a. Uh, the Paula Perry, I did some some music for Paula Perry, and she was signed to uh, Mercury, and Mr. C was A and R. And um, when I was dealing with him about Paula Perry, I said, "What's up with Kane, man?" And he was like, "He all right, man. He all right, you know." He was. I, I was like, "I said, yo, I never met that brother." And he was like, "Nah, you never met Kane." I was like, "Nah, man." And I wish I could do a song with him. And he was like, "You seriously want to do a song with Kane?" I said, "Hell yeah." You know, and he was like, I could hook it up. I said, hook it up. And uh, Mr. C, shout out to Mr. C, he made it happen. And the day I met Ken and we was in the studio, man, I looked and he just walked in, man, and was like, what's up, y'all? And, you know, I didn't have no, we just, we just, it was, it was, it was dope because when he came in, he was like, you know, what you want to do? I was like, well, this is the track. I played the track. And he was like, yeah, the track is dope. The track is dope. You got to hook anything. And I was like, nah. I said, I, I ain't got a hook, but give me a second. You know, and I took a pen and paper and I wrote eight bars. And I said, damn, I got eight bars, right? I said, yo, damn, I'm trying. I got eight bars so far. I got eight bars. And the came was like, well, go. He said, yo, go lay down the eight bars. And then I'm going to come in right behind you. And I was like, all right. I laid down the eight bars. And I could see while I was in the booth, he was writing. And then after I came back out, he went in. While he was in the booth, I was writing. You know, we just went back and forth writing. Like, we didn't even know what we was going to do until until I heard his eight bars. All right, then I know how to follow his eight bars. And then he even heard my eight bars. And it was a dope session, you know. And that's the Same Survival thing. of the Fittest you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Survival of the Fittest. And then um, did a song with RZA. Same thing. But, uh, you know... Me and Rizzo had already went way back to before Wu Tang, you know, from the from the genius days because you know right. they cut. I knew because I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the video the all oh, we love you Rock King video. I was in the video. I was there when we shooting the video. I'm in the I'm in the Come Do Me video too. Yeah, you know? it's crazy. Now one one uh, how did you get to to do what you see is what you get with Exhibit. Yeah, there was a there was a there was a brother I knew named Dan Tanner that uh Dan Tanner worked at Loud Records. And um he was like A and R. I don't know what his Dan Tanner's position really was, but he brought exhibit to my house. And um I played a bunch of tracks with exhibit. So when he got to the what you see, what you get me, he was like, Yeah, I want that one. And so I was like, all right, put that to the side. Played him some more beats, and he was like, Yo, you dope, man. Um but I really only heard that one that I wanted, right? And I was like, all right, you know, I put it on the cassette for him. They left. He, he called me about a year later, out of the blue. He said, Jesse, we read this exhibit. I was like, oh shit, exhibit, what's up, man? And he was like, yo, you ready to do that track? And I was like, what track? 
He said, the track that you gave me when I came there. I was like, I said, yeah. I said, that was a year ago, man. I he was like, dude, so don't tell me you gave it away. And I was like, I don't remember what track. <laughs> he was saying, I don't remember what I gave you, man. And then he had it. He said, this one right here. And he played it over the phone. And I was like, oh, shit. I said, yo, yo I said, you want to know what? He said, you still got it, right? I said, I, yeah, I still got it because I forgot all about it. I haven't even heard it since I gave it to you. And I was like, damn, I hope I can find it. And he was like, yo, I hope you can find it. And, uh, and he found it. I said, yeah. I said, yo, I, I'll find it. He gave me his number. I called him back about an hour later. I said, yeah, I got it. I got the disc and everything. He said, yo, so can you come out here tomorrow? I was like, what? He said, to L.A. Can you come out to L.A. tomorrow? I said, hell yeah. He said, hell yeah. He said, hell yeah. Just have some of that Cali weed for me as soon as I get off the plane. <laughs> and we good. And I went out there and recorded it. And that's another song that, um, you know, I, I did a lot of work, like that breakdown, which is so important on it. You know, we go play his pimps, hustle, leather, leather. You know, when I got to the studio, he was he was playing it. To, he was playing it on the cassette. And when it got to that part, he was like, he said, the only thing I don't like is this part right here, man. So you could take that out. I said, nah, man, nah. This is the part where you go play his pimps, ballers, hustle, brother. Then he was like, oh shit, all right, all right, all right, good. Write that down, you know. And I wrote it down, and that's how we did it, you know. That's so, crazy. Now, Funkmaster yeah. Flex, you had mentioned, too, with the Party Ain't a Party remix for Queen Pen. Uh, you rap on that, but then also, I was always wondering, like, it says, like, you and him produced it or co-produced it or something. Uh, See, that was, was the, that was what damaged our relationship because I still had so much ego involved. You know, I still wasn't thinking business. I just was thinking... This is, I did this, you know, I don't, I, I don't want, so when that, when that record came out, I was so angry with him because I was like, yo, I went through this shit already. Because when you look at the Reminisce remix and you look at the, you know, uh, uh, the Dolly My Baby remix, you, you know, it says remix by me and Puffy, but Puffy had something to do with those remixes though. Like, you know, it wasn't, he didn't totally not deserve to have his name on it. He had, he played roles. You know, um, not just being a flex played a role because he got the work. It was through him that I was able to do the remix. He got the work. He got the money. Same thing with Puff. Puff was getting the work and was getting the money. But Puff was in the studio. You know, Puff, Puff, when he got Mary J. Blige. You know, if I said to Puff, yo, if Mary sing on this shit, they'd take it over the top. You're right. He went and got Mary. You know, when we did the Mary J. Blige reminisce, like I told you, yo, if you could, if you could get C.L. Smooth to bomb on this, you know, he went and got C.L. Smooth. He played a role. And plus, with the Super Cat remix, he and the engineer actually mixed it. I wasn't there to mix it. He was, so he at least played a role, you know? Um, and I wasn't there when Biggie recorded his vocals and all that. That was all puffy. Uh, even when Mary recorded the vocals, I wasn't there uh, when they did all of that. Uh, I whatever I was doing. Um, same thing with CL Smooth when he recorded his vocals on the Reminisce remix. I wasn't there. I mean, I came and I met him. You know, he was writing and I went about my business and then heard what he did later. But I wasn't there when he was actually doing his vocals. I was there when he was writing. But with Flex, you know, he just did the business. And then um, I also, what, what made me mad about that was that it, it said additional production by Jesse West. And it said remix by I think Flex and Teddy Riley in addition to production by Jesse West. And that made me angry, man. And you know, I just decided I didn't want to I didn't want to fuck with him no more behind that because I was like, yo, you you let you and Teddy just rob me, man. I'm I'm beyond that. You know what I'm saying? I'm on another level to be going through this shit. I went to the studio and did that whole thing. I wrote I did the whole remix. I wrote Teddy Riley's rhyme for him. You know what I'm saying? And then when it comes out, it's additional production and remix by y'all, you two motherfuckers. I'm not doing this, you know? I mean, in retrospect, you get older and shit, your opportunities get a little less and less. You start saying, damn, you know what? I really don't give a fuck about credit no more, man. I, I would rather just be working, you know? But, you know, I wasn't that young. I was, I think at that time I was about 30. I was about 30 years old, but still. 
I had already, I'm already in the game 10 years, you know? So I'm like, nah, man. Uh, and I had already, my, my discography was, was already a little ad admirable by then. Man. Like, you know, why am I still doing this shit? This is for somebody still coming up, you know? And I was, but Flex, what I didn't understand was that Flex, him, of course he was getting to work. People were wanting him to remix because he was on the radio, but him getting that credit was was a, 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 a integral part of the business and model that he was trying to create. But he didn't share that with me. You know, to me it was like, yo, you 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 stealing from me, you know. That's what I was that's the way I was looking at it. Gotcha. Okay. And then also around this time, I never fully understood, but the Planets album, was that like a uh international thing or what was that? No, that was that that was that was all the music I did because you know I was signed Atlantic Records. You know, Sylvia Rome signed Third Eye after after we left after we left Bad Boy, right? After we left Bad Boy, we got signed to Atlantic Records, and Planets was just all of the all the recordings, you know, that we did on Atlantic Records. That was another reason why uh, PMD wanted to he P, PMD wanted to manage us. You know, we already had a deal. But he was he was my manager. He was trying to get us off off of Atlanta to get on his label. He had PMD records. But you know, I was like, I don't if you you're my manager, I don't I don't want to be on the same label as my manager. But then we eventually and I got signed Atlanta Records through Timmy Regisford, who signed me to Motown. So now he's at Atlantic Records. So he signs me to Atlantic Records, you know. Um and uh he left Atlantic Records. He kept telling me, I was taking so long to finish the album. He kept telling me, yo, I need to get you in the system. He didn't want to tell me he was leaving, but he was like, yo, when you're going to turn in the album, I need you to get you in the system. I need you to get you. Because, and then once that, once, once Sylvia dropped me, you know, once Sylvia dropped me and I spoke to him, he was gone already, but he was like, that's why I was trying to get you in the system, man. You know, I didn't understand that now, but like I do now, you know, when new A&R is coming, they bring in their own acts you know they not if you're a and r and i take over after you i'm not unless you know you got somebody that's already making noise that the label is going to want you know i'm not interested in your acts no more i'm bringing my own acts and that's how that went down so those were just records that you know i had the masters and they were sitting around and um through chris landry you know chris landry mm -hmm. Chris, that, that was through Chris. That was, uh, cause I put out a few records with Chris and um, Chris introduced me to those people overseas to make that deal happen. And it was just a money thing, you know, they, I, the money, I made a couple of thousand dollars by just giving them dats that I had hanging around, you know? I want you to listen real close to me. I'm gonna ask you some real simple questions and I want some real simple answers. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, I, I understand. You said that you couldn't have possibly been at the crime scene at 11.15 because you were in the bookstore buying my audio book and my hardcover book at 11.15 when the crime scene occurred in Soren's book. The history of gangster rap. So you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying the books. Right, right. At 11.15, I was, I was at the bookstore at, at 11.15 and when, when I, bought, I bought the books and accidentally left them at the store. So at 11.15, you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying books, right? At 11.15, I was, we, we was, when I was leaving, 
it was, it was some people coming in, and I, I, I forgot to grab But you, you, you don't remember who what they look people, like. What they look like or nothing, right? No. Hmm. So. At 12.15, you went to the bookstore buying my audio book and hardcover book and Surin's book at 12.15, so you couldn't have been at the scene because you were buying the books, right? Yeah, at 12, exactly, at 12, at 12.15, exactly, I was at the bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> now you see, you know you know fucked up. Which, which no, one? First you said you were at the bookstore at 11.15 and then you said you were at 12.15. You know you know fucked up. He fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up. Man, you, you confusing me, man. So, you get my book, my audio book, 40 years in Soren's book, History of Gangster Rap, and if you don't, you know you're not fucked up, right? Man, the more those cops ask me questions, the more I wish I bought them motherfucking books. <laughs>